Um, tonight I want to talk to you about uh, getting back on track. Okay, getting back on track. I want everyone to say getting back on track. Getting back on track. You know, in this journey of called Christian living, sometimes we get off track. Man, we get distracted. Hello. How many of you know I'm telling the truth? Now, if you're sitting in here and you're telling me since you've been born again that you never got off track, then that's your first distraction. Lying. Amen. <laughs> now, the word distract literally means to draw apart. It means to turn aside, to divert. It also means to draw or direct as in one's attention, to a different object or a different direction at the same time. It means to stir up or confuse with conflicting emotions or motives. It means to make one puzzled. So therefore the word distraction means the act of distracting or the state of being distracted or drawn away, especially mental confusion. Something that draws away your attention as in amusement, something that amuses you. Amen. Amen. You're with me so far? Yes. Now, I started this with this definition of the word distract because actually to get back on track, you have to, get, you have to be in a state of being off track. This meaning not and track, meaning on course. You follow what I'm saying? One of the things that Paul said, before his departure, he said, I've finished my course. You follow what I'm saying? See, there's a, a course that has been laid out for every one of us. God has already predetermined our course of life. But many times, because we take our eyes like Jesus, like Peter took his eye off Jesus, and he got distracted by the wind and the waves, and the Bible says he began to sink. And some of us, we begin to sink in our Christian life because we get off track. We take our eyes off the goal. You follow what I'm saying? So tonight I'm here to encourage you to get back on track. One of the things that Jesus told the church at Laodicea, he said, remember where you are fallen from and repent and go back and do the first work. In other words, it's not too late to get back on track. Now you're going to understand this after a while when we talk about this a little in detail here. But before I get into the rest of this, I want to give you a word from the Lord. I was in prayer one morning when the Lord spoke this to me. Um, he said to me, you must stay focused on track. You must not get distracted by allowing other things to get your attention, consuming your thoughts as in amusement. He said, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six. 6. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligence is the key to finding God. Don't ask me why God hides himself, because you know why God hides himself. He hides himself simply because he wants you to find him. That's the whole purpose of the game, hide and go seek. You hide so that someone can find you. So God hides himself so that you can come out of your comfort zone to find where he is in desperation. He says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth, according to Matthew 7 and 8. So that means the only way you're going to find God is that you what? Seek him. Now notice he said something else. He says, uh, this is not a casual or occasional thing. It is enduring, persisting, painstaking, continuing to accomplish something as an effort. You follow what I'm saying? In the process of seeking the Lord, sometimes we get, like Brandon said the other night, we get the wind knocked out of us. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, we're taken aback. But God said to tell your people to stand and be diligent. Encourage yourself in the Lord and in his word by speaking his promises to yourself and those around you. Remain faithful and continue to do well. For in due season and at the appointed time, you shall reap if you do not faint. That's in Galatians 6 and 9. So the last thing he said to tell you was to persist. To persist. To persist. Come on, everyone say persist. So that's a word from the Lord. We got to stay focused. We got to stay on track. We can't get distracted by allowing our thoughts or other things to get our attention. Now, I'm going to share something with you, what I would term uh, the enemies of the soul, 
Okay? Write that down in your notes. The enemies of your soul. Understand that God made the children of Israel many promises. And God was able to bring these promises that he made to them to pass. However, between the promise and the provision, there's what we call the problem. You follow what I'm saying? Between what God's promised you and the manifestation of what he promised to bring to pass, there are problems. Now remember, God promised them the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan was there for them to occupy, but there's a problem. What's the problem? There were enemies in that land. There were a tribe of people, there were tribes rather, of people that were prohibiting them from possessing what God had promised them. So I want you to understand that there is a promised land unto us. Now, we're, we're not promised the land of Israel. That was given to Abraham's seed. But there are promises in the Bible, both under the Old and the New Covenant, that God promised us that He wants to bring to pass in each and every one of our lives. But there is an enemy standing between you and the promise. And He don't want you to get the promise of God. And this is what I call the enemies of your soul. And how this came about... God told me, I want you to sit there and I want you to think about it. I want you to meditate on every enemy that you've ever had between the promise and the provision. Now, let me share some of the enemies of the soul. I want you to write these things down. Number one, here's an enemy, disappointment. It's an enemy of your soul, disappointment. Disappointment is when you don't see movement or the promise coming to pass. Things are not turning out the way you expected when you expected them to turn out. God makes you a promise. And you think it's going to happen next week, next month, next year. And God holds out on you. Disappointment. Come on, say disappointment. disappointment. Another enemy of your soul is discouragement. You lose the courage and the strength. You are deprived of confidence. You are what we call disheartened. You follow what I'm saying? All the courage has been drained out of you. You don't have the will to go on and continue. The fight is gone because you're so discouraged. God, why? Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Another enemy of your soul is called frustration. Frustration occurs when you're at your wit's end. Everything that should work don't work. <laughs> right? You've done everything you know to do and still no results. It means to defeat another's plan or block achievement of a goal. So therefore you feel that your, 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 your efforts have been thwarted. It's frustrated, meaning that it's in vain or ineffectual. All efforts, no matter how vigorous and persistent they are, are null and void. You had to bend in life. You tried everything, and everything failed. The things that should, like I said before, you're skilled, you're talented, you, you're resourceful, but it's still not working out for you. What is going on? That is frustration. So sometimes frustration sets in. That's an enemy of the soul. Another one is division. A vision occurs when things are not happening for you, and you start fighting and turning and fighting one another, antagonistic towards someone else or others. You're angry because you're not seeing the desired results. So therefore, you're blaming everybody else for your own failure. As a result, it causes division. You know what I'm talking about, right? Huh? Another enemy of the soul, and I want you to hear this one real good. 